Okay, welcome to another episode of Phantology. We This is a continuation of our previous episode, the 2019 Year in Review, so another episode of Fantasy News. And today we're going to tell you what we're expecting in 2020, what TV, movies, books we're excited for, everything fantasy slash nerd culture. And I have Josh and Jake on the line. Hey again, guys. Hello, hello. Looking forward to it. Okay, so looking into 2020, we talked a bit about some MCU movies. I know Black Widow's on the horizon. What's the other one that's coming out soon? It's got a bunch of characters. I think Angelina Jolie and Jon Snow are in it. So, uh, so we, got, we got Black Widow May 1st. The New Mutants is in the X-Men universe. I don't think it's fully tied into the MCU, but it's been delayed. It's had some production issues, but it's kind of like a horror flick. We got Morbius, July 31st. Uh, which starred Jared, Jared Leto. As That's like a movie, the, the vampire movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's in the uh, Sony Spider-Man universe. Yeah, and it has tints. And actually, I I saw that in the trailer. It has the first Peter Parker, uh, Tobey Maguire. Yeah, it has like Tobey Maguire in the background, or the 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 image of his Spider-Man in the. Background. Well, it's it's the image of his the Spider-Man suit from his movie taken from the spider-man ps4 game it's like a direct oh. shot from the ps4 game of the oh. raimi suit <laughs> so wow okay a little little bit of an inception there but. okay deep deep cut there <laughs> yeah <laughs> so we got venom 2 october 2nd i actually haven't seen the first venom yet um it seems like something just always comes up it was that's, it that's was, tom that's a uh, tom hardy yeah yeah it was a seven out of ten nothing amazing but it wasn't like bad that's that was my okay. take on it. Oh, I'll have to go on. We got the Eternals, which is the one we were talking about earlier, um, which is kind of like the compilation movie that they're doing. Speaking of, um, I'm forgetting the actor's name, uh, but he beefed out for it. Kit Harrington. No, uh, <laughs> I'm stuck on Jon Snow. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, you. Steven's imagining uh, <laughs> Jon Snow all buffed out. <laughs> it's probably still short though. Dinesh from Silicon Valley, Kamal Nanjiani. Um, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that name. And he like beefed out for this movie. He's he has he released a photo on Twitter and he had Dwayne Johnson commenting on it about how um, about his physique and uh, he gone he has some funny interviews on late night shows. Nice. So I'm excited for that one. Okay. Yeah, I really yeah, like he's, him. He's a funny guy. Yeah, yeah. If you guys haven't seen the movie The Big Sick with him, that's a really good one. I've heard it's good, to, and I've heard that that he has a show on Apple TV that he is involved in about stories of immigrants that I've wanted to watch. Oh, Apple TV has shows worth watching. Oh yeah, speaking of 2020, they're come. Well, I don't know when they're coming out with it. I shouldn't say 2020, but they're coming out with a, an adaptation of Isaac Asimov's Foundation series. Oh, so, yeah, that's a big one. All right, um, that's it for 2020. Actually, um, so. Uh, there's some movies forecasted for 2021, but we can get to those later. I'm sure those days might change around a bit, but we got a big, a big year in Marvel movies this year. Personally, I mean, I mean, every year is a big year for Marvel movies, right? I'm excited for the Eternals because I feel like that might be the first glimpse at the new phase, whatever we're starting to set up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we talked about this a little in the previous, in the 2019 recap, but Wheel of Time and Lord of the Rings both in full production by Amazon. Jake, what is your level of excitement out of 10? Honestly, for both of these, 11 out of 10. Um, more excited <laughs> for Wheel of Time right now just because we already have an awesome um, trilogy of movies for Lord of the Rings adaptation and then a mediocre one with the Hobbit trilogy. Yeah. But um, I'm so excited to finally see a worthy adaptation of Wheel of Time of and not be stuck with Winter's Dragon for the rest oh, of the man. <laughs> yeah, but, so uh, if, you, if you are not familiar with the saga that is the, the Wheel of Time TV show adaptation, go do some research. But this has been going on for, what, 10, 15 years of back and forth with, with the owners of the rights. And now finally, after many little backhanded moves by some parties, we finally have a really high-quality looking show that's going to come out. Yeah, it's it. I mean, I don't know the numbers on the budget, and I don't know if they've released that, but you can tell that it. Amazon doesn't want to miss out on the on filling the void that Game of Thrones has left us. So, filling the void, Jake. 
filling the void. Um, I don't think yeah. it's filling the void. I think it's finding the void. Oh yeah. Finding the void. <laughs> the nice That's connection cool. there. Yeah. Enter the void there. Yeah. Now I'm thinking Hyperion, another great series. <laughs> everyone should read also has the void. Yeah. Way excited for it. Uh, I honestly, every once in a while, just Google will of time TV series to see if the Wikipedia or the IMDb has new trivia for me to, to glean. <sighs> Today's Google got me a little tidbit, and this could be inaccurate, but the IMDb page for the series now says, Will of Time, parentheses, 2021, dash, ongoing. And it didn't have a date before, but I've always been more in the camp that it's probably going to come out early 2021 rather than late 2020. I'm not going to dispute that too hard because I think this is a show that Amazon's not going to rush. I think Netflix rushes a lot of their shows, which is why you see some kind of lame special effects in The Witcher, for example, like their post-production isn't as good. But I agree. I think Amazon's going to take their time here. They know Wheel of Time has the potential to be, out of any show, I think Wheel of Time has the potential to be the next Game of Thrones, if that is possible. And there, there's a huge market there. It, it like checks off all, pretty much all the boxes you would want. There's lots of intrigue and politicking like Game of Thrones. Not to the detail of like backstabbery, or I guess <laughs> treason, I should say, that Game of Thrones has. But there's all that. There's there's plenty of sexual content to throw in there that I know they're going to because that's just the standard for fantasy series. Controversial though, right? Because that's not really in the books. Yeah, the books are definitely written in a way where it's PG-13, where you know what happens, but it's not explicitly described as opposed to A Song of Ice and Fire where... It's everything is pretty has pretty explicit descriptions with the the sex and violence with Will of Time. You know when people die and like how they've died, but it's you don't get the description of the carnage as much. And same with most, especially the sexual stuff is a lot more tame and off screen. There are lots of descriptions of what people are or not wearing, but the corporal descriptions are a little low (laughs) compared to. A Song of Ice and Fire. The corporal descriptions? Like their bodies. Oh, like okay. How, okay. Um, I like it. But that being said, it gives it gives a lot of room for Amazon to make it more explicit to uh, feel what they view the <laughs> the wants of the viewers are. Yeah, so let's go VidAngel. So we've, we've been using VidAngel for a while yeah. to, to watch these shows without, uh, without all the content. That is frankly unnecessary to the level that these shows put them in. And we've always been saying like, hey, VidAngel, just stick around long enough to get through the end of Game of Thrones. And now that it's made it that way, it's like, okay, VidAngel, stick around long enough for, for Wheel of Time. Well, the, the, the nice thing, VidAngel has been having some legal troubles, but the nice thing with Wheel of Time being on Amazon is Amazon's been outside of all the, the legal troubles. So it looks like, like they can't, they don't offer service for Game of Thrones anymore because of, hbo's relationship with disney i think right something like yeah. that. yeah also sony who is also producing the wheel of time is also big into offering up like they've they have all of their airplane editions of shows yeah. offered up on yeah website. so i i'm hoping that they stay true to the book i know that they're going to add some stuff and i'm gonna watch it <laughs> um no shame so so <laughs> So let's see. Um, in terms of casting, we have one. The big name attached to it is Rosamund Pike, who was amazing in Gone Girl, um, gave a stunning performance. Um, and then a lot of uh, smaller actors that are talented from the clips I've seen of them, but no other big names. So it's basically the same setup that Game of Thrones had, right? With Ned Stark. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that Game of Thrones did have other bigger British actors you know, that had been in other, uh, other shows, but um, yeah, they had the big Ned Stark headliner. So. And of course I meant Sean Bean when I said Ned Stark, Sean yeah. Bean and the no names. <laughs> so the other controversial thing about wheel of time is the casting. We talked about the casting a little bit, but some have been critical of the diversity of the cast. We're seeing, for example, Perrin is black. He's probably not in the book. Yeah. Which in the books. Is- I mean, the only thing that I'd say he isn't black in the books or would infer that is they say he has curly, I think a golden curly beard or, or or his hair was golden, something like that. But honestly, I, I I don't really see that being a big deal. The only thing that was kind of inconsistent for me is 
I feel like Rand is supposed to stick out in the two rivers, which they did a good job doing. But then him and Matt look too similar in complexion. I feel like Matt should have been more similar to um, the rest of the the two riverins. And I just pointed out Perrin because he came to mind. But yeah. a, a lot of the cast is just diversity all over the place, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, which I think fits the world after uh, the breaking of the world, people being scattered and thrown about, and then after the fall of Ardor Hawkwing's empire, more upheaval and refugees moving around. I think it fits the the world. And and also, there was supposed to be a little bit of tension of not knowing if Matt or Rand was the was the dragon reborn. Yeah, I mean, yeah, in the beginning, and I hope they, I mean, don't want to go too much into spoilers here, but I hope they can do a good try for the, at least the first half to f- first season to have the mystery of, wait, who is Moraine really after? Is it Rand or is it Matt or is it Perrin? Because they all have some pretty unique things about them that might Well, they're all, tel- they're all Talvirin. That's not a spoiler, right? I guess not. No, yeah, they're all Tavirin, but they all have other qualities to them that might hint at um, them yeah. being more special than than the rest of the people there. For me, reading yeah. the books, it was always super obvious that. Well, well, yeah, I, yeah, it, 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 it really it, was. Yeah, because they're not playing that up. They're not playing that up because in the in the pitch for the show that is published everywhere, it talks about Rand being the Dragon Reborn. I don't know. The pitch I saw said who she thinks one of these boys could be the dragon reborn <laughs> there's definitely some articles that say it i yeah, mean I the mean, books have been out for 20 yeah, years yeah more i mean i still feel like it's best to stray from spoilers and these things when we can but nope that's yeah, it america and, and the rest of the world <laughs> randall thor is the dragon reborn or is he is he another false dragon um <laughs> also i feel like you're saying that the first book is primarily written through his point of view so it's it's pretty obvious like who is the main character in the first book. The rest of the books do a really good job of splitting the main focus. I think Rand in later books has less actual on-screen time than um, most of the other characters as it goes forward. Oh, for sure. I mean, he's like hardly in some books. Yeah. Book three, he just pieces out until the very end. Yeah. Which I thought was really refreshing. Like it was a good way to, to tell that story. And we're expecting season one of the show to cover books one and two, right? That's what yeah. the fandom is expecting. I feel, yeah, I, I expect season one to end with Falma and with some new spring and maybe some, some plots from later books like hinted at or started. The end of book two would be a fantastic final yeah. episode of the season. It really is. The end of book one is like, I feel like the end of book two is a perfected version of the end of book one. The end so of book just, one yeah. yeah. The end of book one just is raising more questions. Yeah. Where in the book two is more, okay, this is what's going to like, this kind of sets the stage for how things are going to go. So um, moving away from plot, how do you think, do you guys like the way that Rafe Junkins has kind of has uh, in, interacted with fans? I feel like this is a pretty, uh, Maybe not completely transparent process, but I feel like we're getting a lot more details than we do, for example, in Lord of the Rings. I love um, it. Yeah, I love it. I don't know if it's it's a calculated approach to try to hype up the series, um, which I'd be fine with if it is, but I, I think it's really good because there's there are a ton of Will of Time fans out there, and it's it's an exciting time for all of us to... It's- to be yeah, talking about so, it again and and like have the I like how he's just kind of dropping hints of the changes he plans on making so there's still that speculation. I, I think that um that Lord of the Rings is going to get views because it has a broad fan base. You yeah, it has know, name recognition of, for sure. It has name recognition. It's kind of like politics, you know, like everyone knows Joe Biden's name, but people that are for Bernie are like for Bernie. You know, yeah. I feel like that's kind of what it is with Wheel of Time is there's like a dedicated fan base and the show is going to need its dedicated fan base, especially in the first season to tune in and watch it and, and spread the word. So Wheel yeah. of Time is Bernie and Lord of the Rings is Biden. I like it. Never heard that comparison before. I, I never wanted Lord of the Rings to be compared to, to Biden. Sorry, not, Jake. <laughs> not to get political. Like I, I have nothing against the guy. He's just a little lackluster for how great of a legacy that lord of the rings has <laughs> anyway talking about rafe i love how he's peeled back the curtain 
it's like how Sanderson pulls back the curtain on his writing process. I think yeah. it's really refreshing and I don't see anything to lose by updating fans with a few snippets here, there it gets the conversation started. I think the only reason you wouldn't do that, frankly, is if you just don't have time, you don't like interacting with, with fans in that way, or if you're worried that it's not going to do well, I, I really don't see a downside of doing this. Well, yeah. there, there is something to say about avoiding, uh, keeping an air of mystery about things and like hyping it up. Yeah. Sometimes um, you don't want to overhype something. Yeah. So um, I'm excited. I'm, I'm 10 out of 10, 10 excited for uh, Wheel of Time. I'm uh, currently finishing up my, my latest reread of it. I'm on uh, A Memory of Light. So Last Battle is about to begin. Oh, nice. 300-page yeah. chapter. Jake, oh, you, sound uh, like you're, you, you sound like you're in like AA going through the steps. You're like, I'm currently <laughs> finishing. I just realized uh, this read-through that this is only, I think just it's like my second or third time reading the last two books. I've read the other one so many times because I would reread them whenever I was bored or whenever a new book came out. So starting at book one, I've read that one so many times. And as they further down in the series, I've read them fewer and fewer times. And so there's, there's lots of things that um, I haven't uh, remembered. So it's like reading for the first time again. Okay. I'm Jake and I am a wheel of time fan. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) No fanatic. So here's here's my question. So we talked about a little bit privately. We've talked about, if we think the show is going to drop all at once or if it's going to be episodic week by week, let's say it does indeed follow Amazon's plan and drops all at once. And it drops on like a Thursday. Are you taking Friday off work and watching the show all the way through? Uh, (laughs) No, I'm probably staying up Thursday night and then going to work Friday. That's probably there's enough hours. What if these, what if these shows are an hour, 20 minutes? I'll watch what I can do my work take my lunch breaks and <laughs> keep at take it. Your, probably. How many lunch breaks do you have? I guess it's one day. Yeah. Just my lunch break. You're like a hobbit. Uh, yeah. So you're going to suffer through the show. That's your plan. You're going to suffer as you watch. The Dude, show. I'm enjoying it. I'm fully on one, maybe two episodes a day. I'm yeah. taking Friday. I'm taking Friday off work and watching it. That's my plan. Honestly, I don't know. It depends. Sometimes, sometimes with these things, I can have like great self-control and just do a few episodes at a time. That's what I did when uh, Stranger Things season three came out um, just because life was busy. And I was like, you know what, this is fine. I can do that. But it depends if I don't have much going on, I can easily justify just dumping all my time and energy into watching the show. All right. I'm going to start. I'm going to, I'm going to start working on you by the time it comes out. You'll be over (laughs) at my place watching the show with me. (laughs) Honestly, if I can convince Emily to watch it with me, then we're, we'll, we'll take my time. So the, the question is, do I, do I buy a plane ticket or do we all meet in uh, Vegas at Ben's house man, and, and just shut ourselves away and way to call out where Ben lives. No privacy Sorry. anymore. Yeah. No, Phantology, <laughs> Phantology fans rush to Vegas. To <laughs> meet it's ben. a small place. You'll find him real quick. That would be awesome. Honestly, I, we should try to plan that. Or cabin, Ca- cabin trip, cabin, cabin trip, cabin. go to the cabin. Emily and hates it when I call it the cabin. We have to, uh, so we're going to work in reviews right are we going to do one review an episode maybe Dude, this is just one at the end we could all do it together it'd be fantastic the, the, yeah. this is what we do guys just let's plan a cabin trip that weekend let's go up let's all let's just binge watch we can watch maybe two three episodes at a time record reviews and bust this thing out all right yeah. there it is we're doing it join our, join our discord for an invite to the cabin for a watch party with us <laughs> yeah everyone's invited there's we, we can live stream this thing yeah yeah <laughs> we'll be big by then Okay, so moving off Wheel of Time, we talked a little about Lord of the Rings. Honestly, I don't know much about the show. Like, they've announced some actors. None of them are people I know. It's really hush-hush. So this is why I say I like how Rafe's pulled back the curtain because we have a lot to talk about on Wheel of Time. I'm not that excited about Lord of the Rings. I'm for sure going to watch it, but I don't know anything about it. Honestly, I think, I think they're still in the... Um, I feel like they still are in the writing phase because all they've released is that it has to do with the second age and that it isn't a story that's been told before. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of time to fill in there. So like, it could be, it could be anything. And I think they're still trying to piece that together and figure out how they want. They probably want the series to last a bit of time. I don't know if they want to do anything like Marvel with it, where it's this huge extended thing, but I feel like they're still in the planning phase. Hopefully they take their time on it. I I feel I'm the same with you, Stephen. I'm less excited for that because 
probably because of the lack of familiarity with the, the source material, knowing that it's not going to come from a story that's been told before. I don't know if that means nothing from the Silmarillion will be involved, if it's going to be completely new, but it's just hard to be as excited for that compared to Wheel of Time or something like that that's coming yeah. out where like you've read it, you've already, you are in love with these characters already, you're excited to see them on screen. If there's anything we've learned from Game of Thrones, it's much easier to adapt a show when you have the source material. As soon as, <laughs> as soon as Dave and Dave lost the, <laughs> lost uh, the the books, man, it yeah, it went downhill. Yeah. So the other big adaption that's coming out this year is the uh, Dune adaption adaptions. Or what, what do you know about this? So there's a movie at the end of the year. There's a TV show something about like doing the sisterhood that we don't know anything about at all. There's a bunch of big name actors attached to the movie though. Have you guys, have you guys read the book? No, I haven't. I didn't finish it. I think I got like halfway through it, but I want to go back and finish it. Ryan did not like it. I loved it. It's more fantasy, honestly, than it is sci-fi. Like it takes place on another planet, but it's basically fantasy. And in the way it's set up, there's this, this sisterhood that are basically like Aes Sedai kind of, and so I assume the show is going to just kind of delve more into their backstory because you get a little bit of it in the book, but it isn't like a look inside the White Tower as you would in The Wheel of Time. I really liked it. It's like a Shakespearean sci-fi fantasy tale. Lots of intrigue and plots and subplots. I'm down to read it before the, the movie comes out. It's a quick read too. I feel like it's like three or 400 pages. Names attached to it. I think we have Oscar Isaac, Jason Momoa, Cal Drogo, and Aquaman. I think there were a couple more too. So some, some big names there. I guess we're expecting the movie to be pretty good. Okay, so moving off TV and movies, let's talk about books this year. So this is a, this is a big year. We have finally a new Dresden Files. It's been since 2015. So book 16, Peace Talks, is coming out in July. And we actually just covered book one, Stormfront, of Dresden Files. And we'll keep on reading through those in preparation. We have Rhythm of War, the most anticipated book of the year for me. Yeah, that's what I'm most excited about. And then we have a new Poppy War book. Josh has read that and recommends that series. We have a new Joe Abercrombie book. So I think this is like the second book of a second trilogy after the first law book. The first book called A Little Hatred came out last year and got really good reviews. It has really high ratings. And then the next book I think is called The Trouble with Peace. So two peace-related books that are probably not going to have any peace in them at all. And then I guess there's a new Hunger Games prequel. I don't know anything about this. I don't know if I'm super excited for that one. Honestly, Hunger Games came out. And again, this was me being my the book snob that I am sometimes. I just thought they were this YA book series and didn't really give it a time of day. But then when I watched the movies, I was like, oh, this story is really good. But so I haven't read the books but I heard that this prequel book is supposed to be about how President Snow came to power, I think. So that's about as much as I know. Let's attach some dates to these announcements too. We got uh, May 19th, 2020 for uh, the new Hunger Games called The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Uh, is that the um, obvious ripoff of A Song of Ice and Fire, that title? <laughs> Ballad yeah. of Bird Songs and Snakes? Like. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to disagree with you. We got um, the Poppy War Book 3 um, called The Burning God that is coming out May 28th, so just a week later. And I'd imagine some overlapping uh, fan base there. We got Rhythm of War is going to be released on November 17th. Boom, and... I, might, I might take a day off work for that one too. Yeah, that's yeah. one. That's. I hope he does the thing he did for Oathbringer where the months up to it, he releases, he released like yeah. a third of the book by the time the book was officially out. Unfortunately, it was the most boring part of the book, but it was cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was, it was a good way to do that, like, because it keeps you excited waiting for the next chapter. And then by the time the book comes out, you jump into the, the meat. So, and then we got Peace Talks coming out July 14th. We got a little bit of a wait until books start coming out, but um, once they start coming out, they're going to they're gonna pour. So I'm excited. Joe you know, Abercrombie book, The Trouble with Peace, he just tweeted that out yesterday, actually. That's a September release, but I didn't see a date attached to it. So I know we are probably forgetting books coming out this year. If we are, uh, please tweet at us or join our Discord. We want to hear um, new and exciting books, and we are open to reading new and exciting authors. Okay, now as we close here, let's talk about 
three other books that every year we anticipate the release of, and we have never seen them come out <laughs> to date. The books are Winds of Winter by George R. R. Martin, Doors of Stone by Patrick Rothfuss, and The Thorn of Emberlane by Scott Lynch. And we've been waiting for each of these books. I'll give Scott Lynch a little bit of a pass. I think he came out with his most recent book, maybe like 2013 or 14. So, I mean, you know, six or seven years, that's not quite as long. But Winds of Winter and Doors of Stone, we have not seen an entry in these series since 2011, nine years ago. Are they going to come out this year? So here's a conversation that we had on Discord, kind of a hot topic, is what responsibilities do authors have and what expectations are proper for fans to have? I think that's what it boils down to. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I think it's totally fine to be anxiously anticipating a book and to be disappointed when projected deadlines aren't aren't met. Like author says they expect to have the book out in 2015 and it's 2017 and you google it and Amazon still says this book is to be released in 2015. Like that's <laughs> that's pretty disappointing. But that being said, I, it really bothers me when fans see Patrick Rothfuss or George R. R. Martin doing other projects and then they say, hey, stop doing that. Make this art for me. Make this work like this book for me. Serve my needs. It's like, I was thinking about this analogy. It's like the, the books they, that the authors write, the fans are like Golem. And to them, the books are the, the ring. And they get obsessed with it and it takes over them and they become these toxic fans where... <laughs> all they want is more of the ring. First of all, like, it's not like it's a Lego set with these instructions that you just put together and there you go. There's your sequel. That's perfect. People have writer's block. You, you hit creative ends, especially George R. R. Martin has so much pressure on him now with the disappointing end to the, ser- or to the TV series, trying to finish like the actual book series in a way that fans will embrace. And Patrick Rothfuss as well, you know, we talk about disappointing ends or disappointing endings in TV um, for 2019, but here's some more endings. Endings are hard to write. Steven, let's get a response. Valid points. So here's the thing. I agree that, yeah, we never want toxic fans roasting the authors on Twitter and saying they're lazy and fat and play video games and shouldn't be streaming on Twitch when they need them, when they have a book to write. That's not fair. Life happens and it's their, sure. It's their job, but they don't need to be slaving away for you. So yes, 100% agree there. However, I do think they have some, there's a bit of a contract with their fans, right? The fans have bought the books, the fans enjoy the books, and they would like to see the books written. So I think there is some expectation if you're going to release a book and, and take in a bunch of money and be a public figure that you should get to work. So I don't know. And, and, and the problem is when people put words or put actions in the author's mouths. Like, I I assume they're working hard, right? But after nine years, you're like, where are their priorities? Because, man, nine years, thinking back on the things I've accomplished in the past nine years, like, let's produce a book, you know? Yeah, and I I do think it'd be better if more authors were like Brandon Sanderson, where, I mean, he suffers delays as well, but he's very transparent with where he's at in in each book, in each project. And he lets you know, like, hey, here's the update. Because of this, I am three months behind for my projected goal on this book, or I've had to push this project over, or I've completed this thing. That would be really helpful, especially for books that have been on the docket for so long. But at the same time, I I think it's toxic to even say like they owe you another book. Like the authors aren't just writing books for fans. They're creating the book because they wanted to create something. So when's the deadline? Do they, I don't think I don't think there is a deadline. No they, deadline. They could just die and leave the series unfinished, and that's fine. It's. I mean, it's disappointing, and I and I had hoped that if they knew they were going to die, that they would take the necessary steps to try to fin- figure it out so someone else could finish it, like like the Wheel of Time. But I mean, like I said, it's not like a set of Legos with instructions for this is just how you finish it. In nine years, you could write ninety drafts of a of the final book and be disappointed in all of them. And then what do you do? You know what I mean? You well, you release the, the book. Yeah, no, you don't. One of the no, one of the ninety drafts. One of no. the ninety drafts is going if to be you're, good enough. If no, if you've if you've written ninety drafts and you're disappointed in all ninety of them, you don't release it. Okay, okay. So no, I you, disagree with that. <laughs> you think so, you just you just you think well, 
I'm not happy with it. I don't think the fans will be happy with it, but this is all I've got, so I'm dropping it out. At some point, like the end draft has got to be good enough there's only so many ways for the story to go so, so this is this is like the economic theory of uh when you're dating you need to find the best person that you're happy with that you would be like super happy with marrying and then like dump them and then marry the next best first person that passes that person right first of all that was not my dating approach second of all i don't think the economics of dating apply to creating but no, a story it, it is true jake at some point you can, you can be a perfectionist to to a detriment of your work i yeah i understand that but at the same time you shouldn't put something out there that you are not happy with that you if you don't feel like this is the best it can be you guys com- look you guys were complaining about the ending of so many things of Lycanius, of lightbringer lightbringer Light you're complaining about that but, but yet you're rushing and i get it no, they've had time no, but I you're, you're like okay. just get something out no, they're going to release if no, they just get something not, out they're going to release it and then fans are going to be like we waited 10 years for this crap so i'm not okay no. take a chill pill all right <laughs> i'm not i'm, I'm not saying that I think that authors should um, rush themselves or that they should be dependent on the whims of fans or that, like you said, that they owe us anything. I think that we, that fans should be supportive and should be um, anxiously awaiting and be encouraging and um, not be toxic at all. But I do think that authors do have a, some sort of like a responsibility, not only to us, but like their publishers and their editor and like the people that depend on them to release a book, you know? And I, I, and so, I agree completely with the publishers and I'm sure they do. I'm sure they're being hounded by their publishers to, to finish their contract. So, so yeah. And hopefully they're happy with it. I don't know if you just can't come up with an end for a book. I don't know what happens. I say you, you wait until you you find something you're satisfied with. Patrick Rothfuss has so much he needs to fit in. It's like it's like Game of Thrones final season. There's so much he needs to fit into this third book. Then, then, then you say, write another I'm not book. make it three books. Yeah, then you say, write another book. Then you say I'll, I'll write it and then I'll start another series. <laughs> so like, you're going from demanding one book from him to demanding no, two no, books? You, I, demanding something. No, it's not de- first of all, it's not demanding <laughs> anything. It's, it's, I think you can find a way in, inside yourself to like fulfill this kind of social contract that you've made with you. Yeah, I, I, and I get that. Like I said, I, I understand fans. Like, I am sad and I am like frustrated that the Doors of Stone isn't out yet. Less so with Winds of Winter, probably because we got an, an ending to Game of Thrones or, or, and the TV or, show. Or you just, or, and it's but, all about expectation too. If you, if authors just, if you just went and said, look, guys, like, I, this might not have an end. I might not be able to come up with it. And you know who's a good example of this, of this is Stephen King. He, at multiple times, did not, like, has freely admitted to um, everyone, to uh, his publisher, to fans, that he did not know how the Dark Tower was going to end. And that actually makes its way into like, that book series itself. And he was upfront and honest about it. And good on him. And if then it wouldn't have ended well, or if he would have never finished it, then, th- then at least people knew that. I agree with yeah. you on that. I agree with that they should be more upfront. I agree they should be more transparent and give regular updates for how things are going. But I don't feel like they haven't been dis- they haven't been honest with it. Um, Patrick Rothfuss has said he has he's had a draft of Doors of Stone various times finished, and it hasn't been up to his standards. So he's he's let people know like he knows how it's ending. He just you know he's trying to get there with it. I mean, it'd be better and, if he could say like what he's yeah. working on. But also, if you're if you're beating your head against something, and people are constantly hounding you on it. You don't want to so, be like you don't want to respond to every Twitter question. Yeah, hey, yeah, the- yeah. I, and I don't think so either. So, and I, I'm not saying that he should just go release that draft that he has, but I think that personally, like a strategy, you might say I'm going to give myself till 2025, and I'm going to take 2024 and look at all the endings I have and pick the best one and publish it. No, yeah, you I know? agree. There, they, there should be some some sort of update given. Just. Just for personal accountability in that matter. Yeah. So George R. R. Martin told fans that they could lock him up in a shack if he didn't have it out <laughs> by mid-year, right? But I think he's already uh, gone back on that one. <laughs> he's, he's not in the shack? <laughs> uh, no, fans have not locked him up. I think he is still a free man. Hopefully, so at right. large. Okay, so hopefully you've enjoyed that little debate. 
<laughs> we're excited for a lot of things in 2020. Let, let's just say one more time, do not be toxic. Do not like be insulting these authors that are trying to give, you can have opinions about like how they should write or whatever, but do not be like insulting these people on Twitter or like harassing them at, uh, at Comic-Con or whatever. Like just be a good person. and Just, just be them. like the Ogiers and the Ents. Don't be hasty. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't. All right. Phantology Podcast <laughs> recommends being a good person. And on that note, <laughs> we will see you next time. Actually, we're gonna do we're gonna try to do fantasy news throughout the year. So now that we've got all of this big stuff out of the way, we'll we'll do more monthly updates on things we're excited for and, and the new smaller details. So until next time, see you later. <laughs> see ya. Peace. <laughs>